Hey everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim, and I'm excited because we have an incredible conference coming very soon, March 10th to the 14th, Open Heavens, North Hollywood. Listen, I love what Georgian Bandoff said, this is not just a church plant, but it's a movement, okay? It's a movement of Open Heavens realities. And uh, we're excited because one of our guest speakers, our friends, our very own, is Prophet Jamie Galloway. So we have today on his broadcast the one and only Prophet Jamie Galloway. Man of God, talk to us. How you doing? Hey, buddy. Looking forward to this event, man. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I mean, uh, you know, it's yourself, Prophet Jesse Shamp, Georgian Banoff, myself. And honestly, I think we're going to have some, some special guest speakers is coming on soon. But, you know... For us, our ministry, this is our first big regional conference. You know, we're hosting regional conferences all across America this year. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we're not going to stop. Amen. we got to open it up, blow it up, break through like never before. But, I mean, we're doing this in, in Hollywood, in L.A., in the city of L.A. And so talk to us. I mean, just what, what comes to your mind as you're thinking about open heavens in Hollywood, North Hollywood? Well, I, you know, I've spent some time there over the years and uh, ministered there, uh, here and there, and uh, there as well as other areas of Southern California. And, and uh, when I when I think of that area, that land, uh, I think of the angelic, you know, Los Angeles, city hey. of angels. Yeah. And I think of uh, the 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 sort of uh, understanding of the open heaven in a new covenant context is where Jesus says, uh, you will see the heavens open. He tells us uh, as a prophecy, Nathaniel, he says, you're going to see the heavens open and you're going to see angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And so I, I think and I believe uh, that we're, we're ready for a visitation from God. And uh, for me, Genesis 32 has been a hallmark scripture passage that is, uh, been a recurring theme in my life. It's where Jacob is going on his way. And it says, and he saw the angels of God there. And he named the place Mahanaim, which means double camp. He said, this is none other than God's camp. And yeah. the double camp, Mahanaim, in Genesis 32, it, it, it infers that there's man's camp and God's camp coinciding. And so are uh, we coming to a time like that? I believe so. And so we need to begin to believe God that uh, revival is coming and awakening is here. And what does that look like? Uh, I, I believe that we, we could posture ourselves for it right now. We can prepare. Uh, we're coming up to the time of Esther's uh, preparations, uh, sort of all the preparations coming to that, to that critical moment yeah. uh, where, where she, did, she didn't just prepare inwardly and outwardly about her beauty, but she prepared for such a time as this. And so uh, as we're coming to that time, uh, we're going to begin to see uh, there's going to be some divine intervention that God's going to do on our behalf. Yeah. And so we can trust God knowing that that's what he's going to do. Wow, incredible. You know, uh, of course, uh, just last weekend was Purim. And, uh, you know, I love celebrating God's appointed times, God's feasts. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was doing a recording live with Kat Kerr, the Lord released his word out of my mouth, said from February to April, from Purim to Passover, watch what I'm going to do as I accelerate things for your favor. So, of course, you know, Purim just passed last weekend. We're getting ready for Pesach, for Passover. And there's appointed times for you. And I believe this conference is an appointed time. It's a time where we're coming together, congregating, convening, and there's going to be a greater corporate open heavens. A greater ladder is going to manifest in a sense. And not only do we believe in habitation, but we also need fresh daily visitation. Now, from now to Passover, I mean, this conference is smack dab in the middle, Prophet. Talk to us. What, what's getting you excited about this? What do you sense is different about this? Why do people need to come and, and not just come, but be excited about the season we're in from Purim to Passover? Yeah, I, um, God is all about appointing times and seasons. 
And so when you look at scripture and look at the ways of God, you see that God is he's a he's a, a genius when it comes to time. Timing is everything. And so he set up times and seasons for our benefit. And uh, time is not working against us. It's working for us. Yeah. And so uh, as we're in this season, this time, we know that there are certain things that are being released historically. And we can uh, look at those things as a sense of prophecy to us. And so as we come into the Passover, what we should be expecting is that uh, God is going to God is going to cause things uh, to pass over us if we eat the whole lamb and we live under the blood. And so any uh, hardship, difficulty, uh, things that would be otherwise, uh, you know, impossible to avoid, we could do that as we seek shelter in his presence. And so uh, I believe that we're in a we're, we're, we're in a very interesting time that I don't think uh, 2020 is over. I think it continues today in different ways. Uh, but we've got to gear up. We've got to be ready. And we've got to fight according, uh, with, according to the, our heavenly pattern and, uh, and, and, and receive the new wineskin that God wants to give us for the hour we're in. Wow. And so what worked in 2020 is not going to work right now. What worked in 2019 yeah. is not going to work right now. Yeah. And so we've got to posture ourselves to receive God's breakthrough in the time and the season that we're living in. Wow, it is incredible. Uh, I, I love what you said, Prophet. There is a new wine and a new wineskin for this year, for this decade. And um, there's something that's happening. And God wants us to meet. God wants us together. I, I want you to just chime in, weigh in a little bit into this, Prophet. Because, you know, how important do you think it is? for us to be gathering in midst of the pandemic or the pandemonium that's going on around the world, how important do you think it is for us to gather as one in the name of the Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, and for us to gather and for us to, uh, you know, not only worship the Lord, but to receive the gifts, to be equipped, to be trained, empowered, and be sent out with new marching orders. How important do you think that is today, in a sense, to receive that new wine skin and to receive the new wine. Yeah, Jesus would say it like this, work while it's day, for the night is coming and no man can work. And so what is he saying? There's an hour coming where you're not going to be able to do what you can do today. Wow. And so if you have it in your ability, whether it's to meet or to minister, you got to do it. You can't delay it any longer. And so, uh, we're, we're in a special time, and I believe God's watching. I believe heaven is watching. How we respond to the season that we're in will determine our breakthrough and the level that we live at in the next season. And so it's all about that sowing and reaping. And so we want to see an open heaven. You know, an open heaven is conditional upon seed in the ground. Mm. And so if there's no seed in the ground, the heavens will not open. And so... Uh, rain doesn't fall on on uh, ground that hasn't been broken up and hasn't been planted. Rain falls on on planted soil. And so we've got to understand that we're in a time where we need to break up that fallow ground. We need to break up that soil and begin to plant. Uh, and, and like Elijah, when he brought together the altar of the Lord, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. He put 12 stones upon each other commemorating the 12 tribes of Israel. We've got to rebuild the altar. We've got to come back and pray, worship, come on. and seek the face of God. And, uh, you know, you can't get in certain places uh, remotely what you could get in person. Woo. And I'm, I'm all about being, you know, online, and I'm all about Skyping in or, or FaceTiming in. I love that. But there's a time where you actually need to make that pilgrimage. And you need to actually be where God is pouring out his presence. Uh, Jesus used two examples. He talked about Elijah and Elisha. And he talked about uh, the widow that Elijah was sent to. But Naaman had to go to Elisha. Elisha was not sent to Naaman. Naaman actually had to make the journey across geographical boundaries, uh, across uh, you know political boundaries. So and he went beyond those boundaries 
into a foreign territory, a territory, a kingdom that was not his, mm. and seeking Elisha for healing. And so we're in that time where we, we're going to have to cross the line if we're going to get to the other side. And God is saying this year, it's time to go to the other side. Come on. And so well, we, we, we're, we're in the middle of, I believe, the calm before the storm. You know, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And we're about to go to the other side. And in the middle of that, that, you know, that water, all of a sudden the wind, the waves whip up against them and a great storm. Jesus wakes up from sleep, rebukes the storm. And he has to do this because the disciples don't know how to deal with the storm. They don't have any faith. And so he rebukes them for their faith. He rebukes the storm. Then he rebukes them for their lack of faith. <laughs> Jesus gets to the other side and frees a man from spiritual oppression that had been binding him all of his life. And here Jesus arrives on the scene, frees this man. I believe we're coming into a time like that of great deliverance. Mm. And so in order for us to do that, we got to go to the other side. Not just personal deliverance, but generational deliverance. And not just generational deliverance, regional deliverance. Remember, uh, something got lifted when that demoniac, when that man was delivered, set free. Something got lifted in the region. Now, uh, I love what you said, Prophet, because it's time for us to go beyond borders. It's time for us to cross the line. It's time for us to be brave, be bold, yeah. possess, cross the threshold to possess the promise. Of. It's time for us to be those bold warriors. And I believe, even as you said, the heavens watching. God is looking for that one person, that one man, woman, that company of people that are saying, we're going to stand up for Christ, for the word, for righteousness. God yeah. For those people to anoint, to release a fresh breaker anointing, to be like a Gideon in the lands of, of trauma, to be like a Deborah in a season of famine, to be like those judges of the land. God is looking for those companies with a fresh anointing in this new year. We know many greats have passed. Many greats are passing right now. So many people are going home to be with the Lord in this season. God is raising up a new breed of people. And I'm telling you, God's doing it right now in this season. I love what you said, prophet. We need to build up the altar. There are so many demonic altars going up right now in America, in Los Angeles. And literally, I can feel the tears of the Lord coming to my eyes. There's so many demonic altars being raised and lifted up. We need to be like Gideon, who was not afraid to go and break down his father's idolatrous altars. Yes. And we need to be bold to not only tear down, but to build up. Mm. Where are the reformers? Where are the revivalists? Those prophetic people who not only know how to build up, but also how to tear down. God's doing something special. People of God, you need to come to this conference. Open Heavens, North Hollywood. The theme of this year is Jacob's Ladder. And what better in L.A., liberal L.A., and Hollywood, North Hollywood? We have myself, Prophet Jamie Galloway, Jesse Shant, and Georgian Badoff. Something wonderful is going to happen. Now, I'm, I'm really loving a conversation, Prophet. But, um, you know, talk to us, and just even as we're bringing this to a close. I mean, there's, you know, there's a new wineskin, but there's also partnerships that come. And when these right synergies and anointings come, something combustive happens. Talk to us about that in this season. Yeah, that's a, I, I think that you're on to something. That's really a good, I, I, I like, I like how you put that, you know, uh, the synergy, because uh, God is all about us working together. And when we, when we come together, bring our different gifts to the same table, imagine what is possible. If one could put a thousand yeah. to fly to 10,000, uh, you know, we're, we're in a day and age where the enemy is trying to isolate. And so what does he do? He says, stay in your home, you know, don't talk to people, distance. And that <laughs> is such a, uh, a, a tell about the, the way that the enemy thinks about you. And so what we have to understand is God wants to bring you together in the right partnership in this season. 
right alliance in the season. Marriage alliances, relational alliances, business alliances, all of these together, uh, one could put a thousand flight to 10,000. They're going to, you're going to be unstoppable together. And so, uh, but now's the time where God wants to break isolation off of you. And so if you've been le- dealing with isolation, receive freedom right now because the Holy Spirit is coming and bringing you out of that prison that you've been bound in. When we think about prison, Jesus, I love the passage where in Jesus in Luke 4, quoting Isaiah, Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel, to proclaim the good news, to proclaim the, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to bring out of the prison those who are bound. And so now when we look at Jesus' life, did he actually go and do prison ministry? You know, what was that prison that he was yeah. saying people are bound in? But they were bound in spiritual isolation, yeah. exile. What's the way that the enemy works? He works in exile. Mm. He brings you out of your land of promise, out of the right relationships, and he puts you in a place of exile. Mm. Every time the Lord does something, he's, he's shifting you out of exile into your promise. Come on. And so this year, coming into your promise looks like you getting out of exile, getting into right relationships, and no more living in exile, no more living in that place where you feel like you're isolated from the right connections, the God connections, and the places that you could feel like you could thrive. God wants to make it simple. Come on. You know, what does, it, what does it tell us? It's, you know, uh, king, the kingdom of God, Ben, is supposed to be a place in that, in that kingdom. And now we have that as a spiritual dimension right now. But it will eventually become a natural dimension. But the, Jesus talked about the spirit of the, the kingdom of God is here present. Yes. The kingdom of God takes even your weakness and turns them into advantages. And so uh, the kingdom of God is is what a lot of the socialists hope to imitate mm. in their own ability, but they can't. They can't touch it. Come on. And so what they're, what they're trying to do is help everyone. Have the e- have equal results, and that just that just can't happen outside the kingdom. Mm. And so the kingdom of God equips us and gets it where someone who might not thrive in one community or another community, but in the kingdom, they have limitless potential. Yeah. And so that's the kingdom we've inherited. That's the t- this is what we we need to posture ourselves for. And so we're in a time, I believe, God wants to bring us out of exile into his kingdom and to move in kingdom power, yeah. uh, to operate in signs and wonders, and, and to be a part of, I believe, one of the greatest moves of God in all of history. Oh, my gosh. Of course, whenever there's opposition or persecution, whenever there are challenges, economic, agriculture, uh, stock market, uh, politically, Whenever there's those challenges, this is actually an opportune time for the church to arise. And we see that the Acts church thrived and multiplied. In fact, the Bible says that they grew daily, not because wow. there wasn't problems going on in, in Rome. No, there was actually lots of problems taking place. But the church increased daily. This is a season for the church, the apostolic prophetic ecclesia, to advance with force. And to advance and grow in numbers. So, people of God, I'm so excited. Like, literally, this this conference is going to come very soon. You need to sign up right now. Sign up right now. The link is right here. Um, it's an Open Heavens North Hollywood. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm getting super excited. It's the first big conference of the year. And, uh, and it's going to be a game changer. It's March 10th to the 14th. Myself, Prophet Jamie, Prophet Jesse Champ, and Georgian Banoff. Wow, man of God, any last words, uh, you know, as even as we close the segment up, I mean, and we're going to, I want you to pray, but, uh, you know, uh, invite our people, you know, I mean, what are you expecting for this conference real quick before you just close us out in prayer? You know, um, I, my, the West Coast is dear to my heart. I have so much anticipation that, you know, the, the West Coast is a, is a revival hub. Historically, West Coast has been a, 
part, a key player in many historic moves of God, both in Pentecostalism as well as the Jesus movement. You know, and now we're in a new era. We need a new wineskin. Could it be that God's going to move on the West Coast again in a very powerful way? Uh, it, you know, we're in it. We're in. I believe the dawning of a new era, and there's a generation that has forgot the works of God. Jesus. Whenever there is a generation that forgets the works of God, God moves in yeah. and says, let me remind you. And so I believe we're in for a big reminder. God, Jesus is on the throne and God is going to move powerfully. And so I bless you. Come and jo uh, join us for this event. It's going to be fantastic. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Ben, we're doing a lot of these on per you know online and and uh, these live streams, but uh, 2021, man, is all about getting together. You heard it from the man of God himself. 2021 is all about getting together. 2020, you know, exposed some things, shook some things up, and now it's time to get together. Prophet, thanks so much for coming on. We can't wait to have you coming up very soon. People got to register now. Now, 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 register. It's going to be life changing. It's going to be a game changer. We invite you, Open Heavens North Hollywood, from March 10th to 14th, 2021. This is Pastor Ben Lim with the prophet, Prophet Jamie Galloway. We can't wait to see you. And make sure you share. Make sure you comment. What encouraged you? Did you like this? Comment, comment, comment. Can't wait to see you. And listen, we also have a private online streaming for those who are not able to come. All right? So, but we want you there in person. But we also have private online streaming. You can register. You can Go online at benlimglobal.com. God bless you. See you soon.